boys and girls. We miss you, Cubbies. We miss seeing your sweet faces and giving those great hugs that you give. But we're welcoming you into our home so that we can have Cubbies online. Cubbies, our memory verse this week is Psalm 5611. In God I will trust, I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Psalm 5611. Can you all say that with me? Psalm 5611. In God I will trust, I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Psalm 5611. Are you ready to see Cubby Bear? Let's call him. One, two,
So this verse says, Romans 6, 6 23. For the wages of sin is death. Romans 6, 23. So Cubbies, this verse is telling us what our punishment is for our sin. So what's the punishment for our sin? That's correct, death. And that's kind of scary, isn't it? But the next verse bring good news. So let's say this verse again so we can get to the good news verse. All right. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. Romans 6, 23. All right. Thank you, James. Bye. All right. Can we have Miss Roseanne come hold the next one? And this verse says, Romans 5, 8. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. So, Cubbies, why did Christ die for us? That's right. He died to save us from our sins, to rescue us from our sins. See, God loves each one of you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross to rescue you from those sins. So let's say this verse one more time. Romans 5, 8. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Okay, thank you, Roseanne. All right, can Miss Terry come hold the last one for I'd me? love to. Okay, let's say this verse together. Romans 10, 9. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So, Cubbies, what must we do to be saved? Any guesses? That's correct. We just need to believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Whoever believes in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, whenever they die here on this earth, they will go to heaven and be with God and Jesus. And that will be a wonderful time. And let me ask you one more question. So they put Jesus on the cross, and he died on the cross for our sins. And three days later, what happened? That's right. Jesus was raised from the dead. So on three days after he died on the cross, he rose again and is alive in heaven where he is. So let's say this verse one more time, Cubbies. Romans 10, 9. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. Thank you, Cubbies. Hi, Cubbies. I'm Pastor Charles, and, you know, normally I just would come in and, and visit with you for a few minutes, usually while you're doing your craft. However, Mr. Cody has asked if I would do the Bible story tonight. And so I have the, the wonderful opportunity. I get the chance to talk to you and to tell the Bible story to you from my house while you listen to it at your house, even as we've seen the rest of the cubby lesson that Mr. David and Miss Terry and Miss Roseanne and Mr. Cody all put on from their house. So tonight we're going to talk about David. David is one of my favorite people. How God used him from the time that he was a little boy and prepared him to be a king by, by watching sheep of all things to when he was king and then later at the end of his life as he prepared and got all of the supplies and plans ready so that they might build the temple so that Israel would have a place, a permanent place, to worship God. However, this is going to be a story from when, when David was probably a teenager and so probably about River's age, maybe a little bit older, maybe even by chance a little bit younger. And so in this story, David's father had sent him up to see his brothers. His brothers had joined King Saul in the army as they were battling the Philistines. 
And so David was told by his dad to gather some food and supplies and take it up to his brothers. And so he took it up to his brothers and he left the food there and, and went and found his brothers. And they were on the front line. And they were watching a man from the Philistines, a giant soldier that had prepared to be a warrior from the time that he was a boy, come out to challenge Israel. This man, his name was Goliath, and he was known for how tall he was. Goliath was nine feet tall. Nine feet is huge. In fact, if I were to stand up and I were to reach up as high as I could, I wouldn't even be able to touch his nose. And Goliath, he would come out every day and he would taunt the Israelites. He would tell them to, to send out their, their best man, their best fighter, and let them engage in battle. But nobody from Israel would come. They were all afraid of this giant of a man. And so in second for, for I'm sorry, in first Samuel chapter 17, here's what God wrote is, is he's recorded this story. Uh, here's Goliath ye uh, yelling, taunting, making fun of the Israelites, saying, Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he's able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I win and kill him, then you'll be our servants and you'll serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were distressed and greatly afraid. Have you ever had a chance or an opportunity or been challenged by somebody that was bigger than you? A bully is what we would call them. Ah, oh, if you have, then you know exactly how Israel would, would felt. It's frightening to be around a bully. It's frightening to have somebody challenge you, knowing that, that they're bigger than you and stronger than you and faster than you, and that they're probably going to hurt you. And so David, as he heard all of the, these things, here's what he said. David said to the men who stood by him, What shall be done for the man who kills this, this Philistine and takes away this taunting of Israel? For who is this man that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in the same way. Now, David's brother, he heard this, and his anger was against David. He says, why have you come down, and with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? You've come down, David, to see the battle. David said, what have I done now? Was it not but a word? And he turned away from his brother, and he spoke in the same way, and the People answered him in the same way that there was nobody that would fight the Philistines. They were all afraid. When the words that David spoke were heard and were repeated before Saul, Saul sent for him. David said to the king, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with the Philistines. David or Saul said to, the, to David, You're not able to go against this man. For you are but a youth, and he's been a man of war since he was a youth. David said to Saul, You know, I, your servant, have kept sheep. When there came a lion or a bear, and it took the lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him down and delivered the lamb out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears. And this man shall be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this man. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Oh, who did David trust? Did David trust in his skills as a soldier? 
Did David trust in his strength or in his might? No, he trusted in God and he knew that, that God would deliver them because God had promised the land to the Israelites. So here's what King Saul did to help David prepare for battle. He put him in a helmet of bronze and clothed him with a coat of mail. And David strapped his sword over his armor and tried in vain to go. David said to the king, I can't go with these, for I have not tested them. So David put them off. And then he took a staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the brook, put them in his shepherd's pouch, and put his sling in his hand, and he went down to meet the Philistine. If you want to know what Saul's armor was like on David, for Saul was a tall man, not as tall as Goliath, but he was a tall man. You should ask if you could borrow one of your dad's jackets and put his jacket on and see how it fits you. Well, that's how Saul's armor fit David. It didn't fit at all, and so... David knew that his protection didn't come from armor, but it came from the Lord. And so he gathered his five smooth stones and his sling, and he went out to meet Goliath. Well, what do you think happened next? Oh, let's find out. I'm excited about this. The Philistine, Goliath, he moved forward and he came near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. So it wasn't just Goliath. Goliath had a man that would hold the shield in front of Goliath to protect him. Protect him from the thrust of swords or from arrows that would come raining down. Or even the rocks that were, would be shot out of a sling. And, da and the, the man looked and he saw David and he thought poorly of him. And Goliath said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And, and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. And, and so on. The, the Goliath continued to make fun of David. And David, David came to him, and he took, and, and, and he said to him, This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down. And David, he took a rock, and he put it into his sling, and he started slinging the, the, getting the, the sling going above his head, and he let that rock fly out of the sling, and it got past the shield bearer, and it hit Goliath right in the forehead. And the Bible goes on to tell us that that day, David defeated Goliath. Not because David was stronger than Goliath, nor braver than Goliath, nor bigger than Goliath. No, David defeated Goliath because he trusted God. And God was the one that allowed him to deliver Israel. God was the one that allowed David to have victory that day. And we need to remember that, that God has a plan for us. And that God's promised to be with us wherever we go and in whatever we do. And that we can trust God and we can believe in his plan for us. Let's have a word of prayer. And then uh, I'm going to go let you go back and see the, the rest of your cubby leaders one last time. Dear God, we thank you for David and we thank you that he was a man after your own heart and that he trusted in you and he relied on you and depended on you and that, that God, through him, you used him to bring salvation, to, to bring victory to Israel. And, and God, we, we know that, that as we celebrate Easter this week, that it's ultimately through Jesus that you brought victory. It's through Jesus, the Son, 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 many times over uh, of David th that you gave us salvation from sin. And Lord, we just thank you for that and we give you praise for that. To you be the glory, Lord Jesus, both now and forevermore. We pray this in your name. Amen. Bye. Bye, Cubbies. Bye, Cubbies. Bye, Cubbies. We miss See you, you soon. See you soon.